In this video, we are going to see how to recreate the texture on the nothing here on Grasshopper. So we're going to start by creating a surface, which will be the base of our pattern. And we'll use those curves and uh, network uh, surface to create it. And then we will create a curve that we will then project on this surface to have the first row of our pattern. So to do this, we're going to reference um, this curve into Grasshopper. So we're going to put a curve element and reference this curve. And then we're going to create an offset curve with a distance of 100. Let's lower it. And we want um, the offset to be inside. So in distance, you right click and you put the expression minus x so that the distance will be inside, the offset will be inside. Then we don't want this curve to go that far. We want to, to trim it slightly. So we're going to use the component shatter, uh, which will uh, shatter the curve into different pieces. By linking your curve and putting a parameter, it's going to shatter your curve your curve at the parameter that you define. To make things easier, you can reparameterize your curve. And the parameter is going to be between one between zero and one. And actually, if you link this here, you will see that the output here is two curves. And you can retrieve those curves by um, going into list items and put this list here and the index. You can put the index here. And if you see selected, you see that if I change, it's going to change here. And if I change the parameter, it's going to change where the curve is. The thing is, we want the, cur the curve to be symmetrically cut it. So we are going to add the same parameter as this one, but one minus this parameter. So if I do minus and I put one here and I put this and then I collect, connect the result to the parameter pressing sh uh, shift so that I have both connected. Then you see that the result will be three curves. And if I do, if one of the curves should be the middle curve, yeah, here. So you see it's cut it here. So if I change this distance here, you see I can shorten, shorter or make longer the, um, the curve. So then I will swap uh, my curve from my offset with uh, this component here. So you see now uh, I can change the distance of where it is and its length. So then we're going to project uh, this curve on the surface. So I'm going to project a, sur a surface. So I'm going to reference this surface into a grasshopper. And then I'm going to use a project element. And the curve will be this one and the rep will be this one. So you see now we have this here going to hide this. I'm going to lower this distance. So with this curve, we're going to create a pipe. Um, if I put 10, yeah, let's put a radius of 10. And a cap, we want a rounded cap. So we can set the value to uh, 2 here. And now we have a pipe which is rounded. So the idea is to intersect both surfaces in order to have um, a curve on which we can put the pattern. So if I do, if I go into um, intersection and I go B rep, B rep, I can use this pipe and I can use uh, my base surface. So now you see I have a curve. So I'm going to divide curve. So I'm going to take this curve. I'll divide it into 50 segments. 50 counts here. And to all those points, I'm going to add a circle. So now I have circles which are assignated to the point, those points. The only issue is that they all face the same direction and we want them to face them, to face the, perp the normals of the surface. So we are going to, to use the component surface closest point here the surface being our base surface here. Then we're going to evaluate the surface. So we want to evaluate 
our base surface, always the same. Thanks to this component, we have the information of the UV, where are the points on this surface. So if I put points here, now it can create planes which are based at those points, but which are all perpendicular to the, to the surface. So now if I connect my points here and my normals there, um, I will have uh, circles we will be, which will be orientated on the, uh, in the correct direction. So that's uh, great for the first row. I'm going to hide this and this. Um, so that's great because we have the, the first uh, row of, of, um, of circles, but we want more, um, more of those. Actually, I'm going to lower the size of the circles also. So now I want to, uh, to create more uh, rows. So I'm going to go into the pipe and instead of adding more individual parameter, I'm going to use the component called series. And series allows me to uh, start at a certain um, radius and then to multiply as much as I want, which will be the count, with a different of steps that I will define. So here, for example, I can put same, let's put uh, 10.0 and the count, uh, let's put three, like this. Actually, I'm going to lower this and it will start maybe at, let's say one, around one. And then I swap this, um, this component with radius here. And then you see that it created one, two, three pipes um, because in the count, I put uh, three. So if I add more, it's going to create uh, more, more pipes. And this is going to be the size of the first pipe. And this is going to be the gap between each pipe. So to make something a bit more harmonious, you can actually have this being the double of this. So you can use a multiplication component, put two here, and swap this here. When you change the base, it's going to change all of it. It will change also the step. So let's hide the pipe like this and let's lower the size of our circles. So we see, you see we already have uh, a bit more, um, something a bit more interesting with, with, um, that starts to look like uh, our reference picture. I can put a bit more, a bit more um, counts of, of uh, a bit more circle, but there is something which is, uh, if you look at the amount of points uh, per rows, it, they are not always the same. So here, the first row, we have 39. The second one, we have 45. Um, and the more you go further, the more points there are. And here, there is clearly a pattern, because uh, which is uh, six uh, more to each, each row. So it means that on each row, we should add uh, six more. So in order to do this, um, we're going to use this to, to modify this component, at least to modify one of the input. So instead of having a defined count, we are going to use again the, the component series. And we will start at, let's say, uh, 39 with a step of 6 and with a count of, so the count should be the same as here. So let's put this here, here, and here. And then let's put it here. So it doesn't work well. And the reason why is because the information that arrive here and that arrive here are different. This is a list while this is uh, with different branches. So we are going to flatten this in order to have the same data structure for both inputs. So we have this. And here you see that if I change a number, it's going to change also the middle row. But if I change a step, it's only going to affect the following rows. So we'll put um, this here. Actually, I think this is much smaller, so we can go to our uh, initial curve and maybe make it slow, uh, smaller, like this. Same for the distance. I think it's more here. And a last thing. Uh, so actually, you can add a bit more if you want. Um, the last thing is 
each circle starts at the same part of, of their curve. Uh, but because the curve is bigger each time, it should start slightly slightly further. So in the same way that we put a series on on those two components, we are going to put also a series, but um, on a component which will be seam. So seam will, will, will allow us to uh, change where the seam of the, comp of the, of the curve is. So um, the curves are generated here. So we're going to link our curve here like this, and um, the seam is going to be, uh, we can actually copy this component like this and put this here. And this will be, this will shift, you see, where the, where the component, where, where the circle starts. Uh, and this is going to, to shift each time a bit more for each row. So, so you can use this to um, to align your uh, your rows uh, as you want, like this. So now that we have our circles, you can always play around with the numbers uh, if you want something a bit more aligned, or if you want uh, smaller circles, or or or, um, or other different parameter. But when you're happy with the layout of your pattern, we what we're going to do is we're going to extrude it in order to uh, do a boolean operation uh, with, with the other surface. So to do this, you're going to use the extrude component. And actually, before extruding, you want to slightly move those circles so that the extrusion goes through the surface and not just at the surface of the surface. So we're going to move those circles here. But we want to move them individually depending on their normal. So we're going to use the same normals here. So you see they, are, they have been shifted from here to here. And then uh, this geometry, we're going to extrude it using the same normals, but it's just going in the wrong direction. So we're going to create a vector out of this amplitude. So we're going to use this vector and the amplitude will be, yeah, let's put 10 connected. And then in expression, you can put uh, minus X so that you have the um, negative uh, number of, of what you input. And then if you put this, you end up with an extrusion that goes through your surface. And then you can cap it here. And you can use this surface, this base surface, offset it. Zero 0.5, yeah. And then you bake this. And then you can do a Boolean operation like this. And now your, your pattern is ready 